Hi, I'm Scotty. If you want to learn how to service and repair antique mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. This is the movement that we're going to work on today. It's a Victorian era and Sonia cast iron mantle clock manufactured in about 1880 or, or soon after. It's a striking clock with a massively heavy cast iron case which we'll take to pieces later on, clean it up and put a coat of paint on it and bring it back to how it used to look in the old days. We'll start off by winding up the springs so we can contain them with a mainspring clamp. A bit more. That down. And see what we've got in the way of the clamp to hold it. Oop, a little bit tighter. See if that fits now. Yes, all right. Now I need a lip down tool, number six. That's a let down tool. I'll turn the movement over. And then start to let down the mainspring. Where's our click? Hmm, way in there. Looks like fun. Put the let down tool on. Wind it up a tiny little bit just to take the pressure off the click. Hold the click back with a screwdriver, let it turn a few times, let it down a bit more, we're trying to get, there we go. We want to get the main screen clamp into the center of the spring so it stays there and doesn't fall off. Now we can fully let down the spring so all the tension is taken into the clamp. That, pull that click out again. Let it spin round slowly in your hand. You'll feel the pressure disappear. There we go. First one's contained. We'll do the same with the second spring, which is the going side. Number six key, wind it up. Sounds like that spring could use a bit of grease on it, it's kicking a bit. A little bit more, we'll try that. Around. 
and check to see how our clamp goes. Yep, that's a one. Same thing again. Turn the movement over. Here's a let down tool. Tighten the spring a little bit. And pull back on the click. And let the let down tool run round in your hand. While keeping an eye on the clamp. You can see it's starting to take up some pressure there. Take it off. Turn it over, see what we got. Yep. Right. Put that in the middle. Put the clamp in the middle of the spring there. Now we'll let the spring down completely. A little bit of pressure. Open it up. Pull the click back. And there we have it. Both springs are now contained. That we can now start to take the movement to pieces. Before we start to take the movement to pieces, you'll notice on the front it's got the brand and Sony clock made in New York, and you'll notice a number down there five and a half. That's the total length of the pendulum on this movement. Obviously if it's summer or winter you'll have to adjust it up or down accordingly but that gives you the starting length of the pendulum. Right we're using a number seven spanner. We'll loosen these nuts off just a tiny bit to get a start. Okay. Now. Oops, turn it around the way. We'll take the suspension spring and the pendulum leader off first. By undoing these two screws. There. And there. Carefully lift that up and take it out of the crutch. That piece there is the crutch. That part there is the suspension spring and that's the leader. The pendulum bob hangs down on there. That's the pendulum bob. So it hangs like so. We'll take the fast slow winder out while we're here. That'll just drop out. Now we can undo the nuts a bit more. Remember there might be a little bit of tension left between the wheels. So we'll keep that in mind when we open up the plates. We won't just rip them off. We'll take them off very carefully and slowly.
And the last one. Now, slowly lift, actually. You can see the spring here that keeps tension on the hammer. We'll slide that off. Like so, we'll put that back on later on. Now slowly start lifting the, the front plate off. Little bit of tension there. You saw the warning wheel move. So, come on. We don't want pieces jumping out anywhere, so be very careful when we take this off. Here we go. That aside, we'll take the crutch, the pallets out. We go on the going side over there. And that's our movement. Get our block out. Now we'll start taking the wheels out. On the going side, first wheel is the escape wheel. Third wheel. Tight, we'll lift that up. Take a little bit of tension in, that's what's holding it. Right. Second wheel. First wheel. Strike side. At the fly, up the other way to hold it there. The fly, the warning wheel, you can always pick the warning wheel, it has one or two pins on it. When it goes into warning for the hour, and the other one for the half hour. That's the lift lever. Move it aside. It's a bit. Get the, I'll take the hammer out. That'll make it easier. The hammer's gone. There, take the, the lift lever out, 
which is that BC. Now, look at the first wheel. Lift the spring up a little bit so we can make sure that's run down. It's got him. First wheel on the strike side. Now we'll take the main springs out. Our contained spring for the strike side. Put him over there. The going side, the going train, I'll put him over there. And that's how motion works. We'll take those out on there, that one there. That's the back plate. It's all finished, been taken to pieces. Now we'll put them through an ultrasonic cleaner and clean them up and then we'll check the bushings to see how good they are, whether we need to do any rebushing or not. I've cleaned all the movement parts in the ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll now put them back into the block in their correct order. Once I cut off the little pieces of brass wire, that held them together. Do that. Now the strike side. We'll put the wheels into my little foam block in the correct order. Second wheel, the warning wheel, and the fly. Now the going train wheels. Escape wheel first up, first wheel, second wheel, third wheel. They're not orientated correctly up and down. At this point in time they're just in the correct order. So now we'll start to put the wheels back into the plate and we can check and see if we need to do any bushing. We'll put one train in at a time and that way it'll be easy to see what we've got. Pop the wheel there for start. Great wheel on the first wheel. Which obviously goes there. Second wheel, Oop. third wheel, and the escape wheel. Third wheel's fallen out, pop them back in again. Okay, that's the third wheel. Now we'll put the top plate back on.
put a nut on each of the lower pillars. That'll make it easier. To align the wheels. First wheels in. That off there. First wheel, second wheel. Two. Get a bit easier, I would think. Second wheel's in. Down to the third wheel. And escape wheel. Into there. it round, see what we've got. Okay. Put a nut on the top, tighten them down so we can check and see what the bushings are like and what the end play is like. Tighten these up with their 7mm spanner. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Second wheel. Tiny little bit there on the first wheel. You can see movement on the first wheel there. That'll have to be rebushed. Second wheel's all right. The third wheel's all right. So we'll have to rebush that pivot there. So, I'll mark that with the text to pen so we know which one we've got to do. Then we'll look at end play. Make sure the wheels, each one can move left and right. They're not tight. And the third wheel. Okay. Well, we got one bush to do there. The rest are okay. I'll take the plates apart, take the wheels out, put it back into our foam block. Then we'll have a look at the strike side, see what it looks like. Lift 
the top plate off gently. Then take the wheels out. Scope wheel at the top, third wheel, second wheel, first wheel. The going side train wheels are now in the correct orientation. Now we'll start loading the strike side. First wheel. Second wheel. That's a hammer strike wheel. The warning wheel. And now the fly. Which goes there. Put the top plate on again. Couple of nuts on the pillars. Now we can align the wheels with the bushings. Thank you. First wheel, second wheel, third wheel, catching on the pillar. Limp. and the fly. Move that out a tiny bit and fit him in. And that's the fly there. Alright, how do we go? Right, we'll put another Nut on the top pillar to hold it, tighten it down a little bit. You notice I spin the train to make sure it's moving freely before I tighten the nuts down. Just in case one of the pivots is moved, you tighten it down and you snap it off. Right, see so what we got. First wheel, shocking. That one there. Have to be redone. Second wheel, that one there is terrible. Third wheel looks alright. I'll just mark the first two. That one, and that one, see what the, yeah, fly looks pretty good, 
back plate. First wheel's loose. Third wheel's okay. Second wheel will have to be done. Third wheel's all right. And the flies are right. So first wheel. Our tweezers to get into the second wheel. Mm, the warning wheel looks a bit sus too. We'll do that one and that one. Right, we'll take the train out now. The wheels back into our foam block. Move the top plate. Fly. Warning wheel, remember I said before, well done. You can always pick the warning wheel, it has one or two pins on it. Warning wheel, second wheel, first wheel. There's the strike train in the correct orientation. Well, I'll start rebushing those bushes that need redoing. I'll mark them on the inside, they'll be easier to see. But we've got three there and one there. And one there. So we've got four. Four bushes to do. I'll get those done on the on the bushing machine. Then I'll return. And we'll put all the movement in back together again. One train at a time. And make sure that everything's up to speed. Before we go on to the next step. I've redone the bushing. On the front and back plates. The next step of the process is we're going to put the wheels into each train, put the top plate back on again and try them to make sure they all work well with each other. They all work individually with the individual wheel. We've run through that. Now we're going to put all the whole train in and check it out and make sure that everything works well with everything else. It's the first wheel. Now put in the second wheel. Goes there. The warning wheel. Which goes there. Now we'll put the fly in, which goes there. Top plate on. Couple of nuts, 
loosely on the post down here. Hold the top plate in position. Not tight, just sufficient to stay there. Right. Now we'll put the pivots into the bushes. First wheel. Not quite. You can wheel. Warning wheel. Now lift the top plate up a little bit. Put in the fly. They're all in there, right. Now, tight, now tighten down the nuts. Put one on the top here. Hold everything in place. Now spanner. Lightly tighten up. Then we can have a look and see how the train works together. We've got it's a little bit lumpy, that should be spinning freely. So we will take out. Uh, there's a problem. No in play on this wheel here, the warning wheel, and the pivot there is not going fully into the bushing. It's standing a little bit proud. So we know which one we have to fix. We'll put the other wheels back into our foam block in the correct position and orientation. That's the one we'll be working on. Second wheel, first wheel. The warning wheel back in. Align the pivot. Check it out again. A little bit of end play there, but when, when it goes together with the rest of the train, still pretty tight. Definitely need to take some out of that side there, out of that bush. Then we'll check the one at the top. Remove those. Put the wheel there. 
we'll get our brooches out and we'll broach that out and get it working properly. Now we'll select the correct brooch. To fit that bush. Try that one. Yep, good. That's the one we want. First try. Take up the back plate, put the brooch into the bushing. Remember it has to be aligned perpendicular, though we'll use this post here as a guide. Set it up like so, and then very slowly Turn the brooch when you've done a little bit, put the wheel back in again. Top plate on. Pair of tweezers. In goes the wheel, spinning very freely. Now we will see in play. You can see the wheel moving backwards and forwards there. We'll now put the train back together again and check it out. and test it. First wheel. Second wheel. Warning wheel and the fly. Top plate back on. This time we'll put a couple of nuts on the post because we've got more than one wheel in there. We don't want them all to drop out. One there. One on that post. Okay. First wheel. A little bit tight on the post. First wheel. Second wheel. First and second. That is a little bit tight. What's wrong with that green end play? That one's all right, that one's all right. Line up the, the fly.
Morning wheel. And the fly. All right. Put a nut on that pillar to hold it. The others will be okay. Now we'll have a look and see. Check the end play. One, two, and in play on the wheel. The second wheel. Okay. Right, we'll take that out, we'll put in the going side train and we'll check out and see how that goes. Undo the nuts. Take off the top plate. Fly can go back. Warning wheel. Second wheel. And the first wheel. Now for the going train. First wheel, second wheel, third wheel. And the and the escape wheel. Put the blade on. Same procedure as before. Nut on the two bottom pillars to, to secure the top plate. Now we can install the pivots into the bushes. First wheel, second wheel, third wheel. Nut on that pillar to hold it. The other ones, tighten them down a bit. Now we'll see what we've got. That runs pretty smoothly. Let's check for in play. I think that's right. Come on. And easier to get in here to the third wheel. Yeah, in play. Right. Well, that's all done. Take the nuts off. Remove the top plate. Now we'll put the strike side train in. 
First we'll put in the motion works. Which goes there. Under the first wheel, so we'll have to lift that. Put it back in again. That wheel goes under there. into there now the going side main spring fits there strike side main spring There we have it. Bring that up a tiny bit to put the first wheel in. It's got him. Second wheel. Before we do that, we look at putting in the lift lever, which will have to go down in there. Right, that's got him. Now, second wheel. there and then the warning wheel actually we'll leave the warning wheel out for a moment because we've got to set up the three points I'll just drag this spring up here so it'll be easy for us to find it and we can align it later on There we go. Put the hammer in. Which goes there. Top plate on. Get the spring to position itself. Almost there, not quite. Got him. Put a nut on that pillar. Turn around. Now we'll tackle the going side spring. Let back into place. Not on that for a second. Loose them off a tiny bit and get the hammer into place. Now we can tighten them down a little bit.
Right, now we're ready to start putting the pivots into the bushes and getting the movement set up. The movement has been put back together again. So now we're going to oil it, then we'll put it up on a test stand and check the timing and make sure it's correct. This is the oil we're going to use today, Mobius D5 clock oil. So we'll start off with oiling each of the pivots in this bush. Some under here. Come on, that's a post. There's a fly. Now we'll do the going train. Scope wheel, wasn't much on that, scope wheel, third wheel, second wheel, first wheel, we'll put some oil on the hammer. Right, that's all that side. Turn the movement over. And we'll oil the other side. The other side of the hammer. First wheel, second wheel, third wheel, and the escape wheel. Now the strike side. Fly. Third wheel. Second wheel. First wheel. It's a bit light so I'll put another one on there. Two small ones in there. Put one around the fast, slow selection. Have a look, we've got into there behind the pallets it's on the inside this time not the outside the other end
Right. Now we'll put it on a test stand and start to time it. I've set the movement up in a test stand. Press some of that. As you can see, the bubble there is in the centre so that the movement is now level. Wind up the springs a bit and I'll put a pendulum bob on and we'll start the movement working. Now I'll wind up the springs a little bit. Now we'll start to time the movement. I'll put a beat amplifier on the movement to make it easier for us to get it into beat. That has to come up from the other side. Has to lift up. That movement's now in beat. So we'll let it run for a little while. Move the oil through the, the bushings and the pivots. Then I'll wind it up some more. We'll put a, a digital clock beside it. After we put the hands on the face of the movement. And then we can start to check to see how accurate the time is. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about antique and vintage clock repair, be sure to hit the subscribe button before watching these next two videos.